Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you about the oil analysis report I got back on the Toyota and also on the Chevy. If you look back on the channel, I had two vehicles, a 2006 Toyota Tundra that I was at the 365 day mark on the Amsoil Signature Series 5W30. I drained that, took an oil sample, and sent that off to Blackstone Labs. I replaced that with the Pennzoil Platinum, and I will be doing an oil analysis on that at the 3,000 mile mark. And then I did another video where I think I was at 364 days on the Amsoil Signature Series 5W30 on the 89 Chevy K1500 with the uh, replacement engine that had 40,000 miles. I drained that and installed the Quaker State 5W30 full synthetic, took an oil sample and sent that off to oil analyzers. So I want to talk about the results. Um, so basically on the Blackstone, I'm just going to freeze this and talk over it. <clears throat> the Blackstone oil report was very, very, very good. Uh, they were actually very shocked. Are pleased that this oil had 11,122 miles on it when I changed it and they said that this was pretty much the same wear metal contaminants that they see in an engine that's at 6,000 miles of oil use on it and there was nothing at all that was uh, concerning um, I like their commentary they wrote that said it was, uh, these are great results for your Tundra's engine. Universal averages from the 1GR FE engine show typical wear after 6,000 miles of oil use. You ran this fill of AMS oil much longer, but metals are still reading right around the levels in that column. So basically it's saying that they think that this engine is wearing better than most that they see in their testing, and they're very happy with that. They even said that's fantastic. You can just look at the different um, wear metals if you'd like to. One thing that I'm most concerned about is the TVN, the total base number. Mean, meaning basically how much of the uh, protection, almost you can think of this as antioxidant protection there is left in the oil. The 5W30 synthetic oil I think is around 11 or so of brand new virgin oil and it's now down to two, which is great. This truck is used for pretty much stop and go driving, short trips, 10 miles or less. Uh, there have been a couple of longer trips that I take occasionally in it, but uh, as you'll see from the, sh the report on the Chevy, um, this oil is really, really good in this engine. It's doing very, very well. So I'm very pleased with it. I am excited and uh, anxious to see what kind of numbers I get from using the uh, Pennzoil Platinum. But this also, I was using the Amsoil EA oil filter. And yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better report. I have several decades of oil reports on different vehicles I've had, and I've never had a bad one from Amsoil. Uh, I usually get reports that are pretty much similar to this. All right, so let's go to the report that is not my favorite. And I'm not going to say it's disappointing, but I'm just glad that uh, I didn't run the oil any longer. So on the Chevy, I ran this for uh, nine, about 9,000 miles. And I sent this to oil analyzers. The reason that I'm going to be using them from now on is because their oil analysis tests are about $13 cheaper than the Blackstone ones. So I buy a, a bunch of them from Amsoil, and um, that's the ones I'm gonna be using from now on for right now. So uh, just to give you some backstory, the engine in this truck, I replaced it and it has, it was a brand new GM crate engine, not a rebuilt one, but a brand new one. And I broke it in with the uh, Castrol conventional GTX and have been running the Amsoil 5W30 signature series in it its whole life. Now, this truck is also used for stop and go driving, but this is more, sometimes it tows a trailer. Sometimes I only go a couple miles in it and shut it down. So this is the epitome 
of severe service. Now on the Amsoil Signature Series, I probably should have ran this oil six months and 12,000 miles instead of 9,000 miles in a year, but I wanted to see what it was capable of. And I'm a little concerned, as they are, about some of the wear metals. And again, I'll, uh, I'll try to just freeze this and talk over it. The, uh, the base number on this was right at 2.12, um, which is just a little bit less than it was on the Toyota, which is good. It still had life left in it. I could have gone a little bit longer, uh, but I'm glad I didn't. So I started having levels of uh, chromium, nickel, aluminum, lead, and tin, which are, and, and a little bit of silicone. These are not alarming. These, if this was in color, these would be in yellow. A couple of them in green, but these would be in yellow and not red. So there was nothing that they were like, hey, you, you know, I, I did change the oil in the filter, but this is not anything that they're like, look, you need to um, look at the internals of your engine because something's not right. This is what I would uh, consider uh, slightly confusing to me because Chevy uh, small blocks are extremely easy on the oil. Okay, they're not, there's, they're very simple engine. They're just push rod, overhead, uh, rocker arm valve engines, single cam. And they're, they're very, they're very uh, easy on the oil. There's no, you know, VVT timing. There's no, you know, cams that have to be pressure actuated and, and thing to adjust the timing and stuff like that. They're just good basic engines. And so what I'm going to do and what I did was, as I said before, I put the uh, Quaker State full synthetic, which has one of the highest pressure PSI film strength value of any oil, even higher than the Amsoil. And I'm going to run that for 3,000 miles. We'll do an, another oil analysis and we'll see if a lot of these numbers drop to, let's say, you know, a third or a quarter of what they are now. Uh, if that's the case, then we can extrapolate that um, if we ran it longer, it perhaps, uh, I certainly wouldn't run it for a year. And I think with the style of driving that I do in that truck, that um, a year, even with the Amsoil, is probably not the best thing for this engine. Uh, the engine went, runs fantastic, but they are a little concerned with the, the different elemental wear uh, metals and things in here. So. Yeah, I definitely, both of these vehicles are not vehicles that I'm going to <clears throat> do any more annual oil uh, runs on just because of the, you know, the severe nature of it. I, I would see doing six months, six, six months uh, or 12,000 miles with the Amsoil, but I don't uh, think it would be wise for me to try to stretch it out for a year. If I did a lot of long distance highway driving, no problem. Um, I almost always have done uh, one-year oil changes intervals with Amsoil since I've been using it since the early 90s and I have had never had a bad report from the Amsoil so I don't consider this a bad report I consider this a um, a warning that this engine with my style of driving okay they have to really emphasize that that if you have the same truck and you drive a lot further distance <clears throat> excuse me than I do your results are going to be completely different all right but for my what I use the truck for in my style this is not uh, a good interval to uh, to be doing that so uh, I would be looking at the economics of that I would definitely look at dropping this to six months and uh, 12,000 miles but it may be I don't know, that's why I'm doing this. It may be better for me to run a different oil and say change it at 3,000 miles. I have no problem with doing that. If I can <clears throat> get these wear metals down really, really low, I would consider going with uh, continuing to use the, uh, the Quaker State. So if you're not familiar with Rat 540's oil analysis blogs, he's a mechanical engineer, just type in Rat, R-A-T, 540, in Google and it'll come up it's a uh, I think it's a WordPress blog he's been doing testing um, 
on oil pressure, oil film strength since 2013, so about 10 years, and he has hundreds and hundreds of oils that he has, he has tested. And I put a lot of stock into somebody that's not trying to market or sell me anything, um, of course. And there's a lot more to oil than just film strength, but if you want straight up wear protection, you do want an oil that has a extremely high film strength. And right now, as of 2023, the Quaker State Full Synthetic, it used to be called Quaker State Ultimate Durability. They changed the name, they tweaked the formulation just a little bit so that it meets Dexos uh, Gen 3 standards and the PSI value dropped just a little bit, but it's still the highest of uh, any other oil by far, and it's much higher than the Signature Series. So, uh, but again, you know, there's other there's other uh, factors and parameters about oil, but the best thing to do is just to test it and see what mileage and interval interval levels will work in my certain situation. I would say, you know, the same thing for you. So. Uh, I will do another uh, another video in when both of these engines hit 3,000 miles and I change it, I'll send the sample and we'll do this same style of video. If you have any questions, uh, concerns, if you've used either of these oils, um, if you have a good report with Amsoil, I, I love Amsoil products. Uh, I'm in no way saying that they are bad or inferior, uh, but I just know that, you know, at some point, driving style you know has a huge effect on the oil now again i could have run these for a little longer they were still one of the most important numbers are the base numbers okay none of these wear metals were in the severe range but the <clears throat> tbn is really what you're you're keeping an eye on so uh we'll report back and we'll compare the oil analysis to uh, the 3000 mile interval for the oils that i'm testing and hopefully we'll get some good information from that so I hope you find this update uh, informative and helpful, and I will talk to you guys on the next one.